Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Techvity Investing. And today we are going to discuss one more interesting stock in the series Taipei Stocks. So before we begin the session for today, I want to give a general disclaimer that please do not treat this video as a piece of investment advice. Do consult your financial advisor before making any investment decision. And we may have holdings in some or all of the companies that that we discuss in this series. So the company that we have for today is Rights Limited. And uh, over to you, Kalpak, for discussing the introductory part. Uh, thanks, Abhinit. I think we've got a very uh, interesting discussion on our, over our chai lined up today uh, because this is a particularly interesting company. Okay, so let's get on with it. Uh, so Rights is essentially a uh, central public cent sector enterprise. It has a mini Ratna status. So 72% of the promoter of this company is the president of India, or it's held basically by the government of India. Okay. And it is essentially an engineering uh, services or infrastructure consulting and engineering services company. So what that means is basically this company uh, gives out uh, expert services, expert opinions, uh, uh, and is able to also execute some engineering pro uh, projects, especially focused towards the transport sector. Now, primarily rights is actually, uh, you know, a, a spin-off from the Indian railways. But now they have diversified, not just providing uh, services to the railways, but also to, in general, the transport sector in India and abroad. So whether this comes as a service sector or infra sector, it is a little difficult to say, but we will definitely make a conclusion by the end of this video. So let's, uh, let's uh, moving on. Uh, you can sure. just... So this is the, yeah, so this is the share price for rights and it looks a pretty decent, uh, you know, chart for rights. Okay. Uh, I mean, unlike many other PSUs, uh, it's, you know, this chart is uh, definitely, uh, I would say it attains a distinction. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about the price action a little later after we speak uh, about the business in detail. Okay. But what I want to draw your attention to is the dividend yield and the return ratios, basically the return on equity and return on capital employed. So like Kalpak mentioned, uh, we have still not concluded whether this is an infrastructure company or it's a consulting company. Uh, but you just take a look at the return ratios. Those are fantastic return ratios. And uh, probably, you know, you get to the, see these return ratios in some multinational companies. Okay. And, uh, you know, the dividend part of it uh, brings, you know, brings, uh, brings to it the aspect of a PSU. So we can say that it is, a, you know, it is a combination of a PSU and a multinational. Okay, so by the face of this particular chart and the return ratios and the dividend yield, we are looking at a company which is a, it's a great combination of two different things. Very unlikely to see such a company, I mean, I think this is probably one of the only companies that is positioned in, uh, that has those kind of numbers. I don't think you'll find any other company. So let's look at why that is the case. Okay, uh, we will uh, little bit dive into the key business areas. I think it is important to understand what rights does. So on the left hand side or leftmost column, you can see a percentage numbers and uh, corresponding to it, it there's, a, there's a name. So for example, consulting 45% means consulting is basically giving 45% of the revenues to the companies. Okay. So consulting is essentially what the company was derived for. Okay. So uh, it is very similar to IT consulting companies. Essentially it is a manpower and skill based job to basically provide feasibility reports, uh, you know, detailed project reports, project management consultancy, quality assurance for rail projects. Okay. Uh, they are, they are, they are doing some state of the art, really difficult work. For example, they did a aerial survey for feasibility of the Mumbai Ahmedabad, the high speed rail project. They have uh, experts, engineers. So, so essentially they've got a team of about 3000 people working for rights, a majority of whom are, you know, engineers and uh, they have very, very, well-defined, very, very high-end skill sets, and they're able to provide these consulting services, which I feel in itself is a very, very rare skill for a company to have. So it is essentially ex extremely skill intensive and very difficult to replicate. So somebody else cannot simply come and come in and, uh, you know, stake claim to what Rice does because these guys are working on a massive scale. So from, uh, you know, major projects like the Bharat Mala project to the dedicated freight corridor, 
to all the metro rail projects these guys are consulting everyone and they also do some smaller smaller jobs for example feasibility of doubling of railway line uh, there's these are not small jobs but as compared smaller jobs or railway electric yeah. electrification signaling etc so 45% of the business comes from consulting and this is a very high margin product for the business for the company because essentially the only input required is the travel cost and the, the salaries of the skilled employees very similar to what you would expect from an it company the next yeah. thing the, the next things you can see are exports turnkey leasing and others i'll quickly t- speak about each of these so rights has a very strong and very well growing exports arm okay uh, basically these are the this is the only company uh, or only arm of the indian railways that is exporting which is uh, like demu is uh, diesel electric multiple units this is like a local train okay yeah. then locomotive itself like the main engine they also have a coach uh, factory okay it's called sales uh, sale bengal rights wagon uh, manufacturing company okay they yeah. manufacture the box uh, coal uh, you know box uh, coaches you can see on the coal goods train so these guys are exporting the entire uh, uh, locomotives or demu sets or coaches to various countries uh, across the world and they have got strong hold in markets in africa and you know the sark uh, sark region in fact uh, they are doing very well in africa only last year only this year uh, they have just now closed a 700 crore deal with the government of mozambique okay for a cape gauge uh, project okay basically cape in india we run on a broad gauge that is 1 1 meter the cape gauge is i think 1.076 meters okay slightly larger larger gauge so essentially this goes to say, say that this company has the technology to create something new or cater to a market that you know very it's a very niche market so cape gauge across the world only has you know 16 countries using it so now okay. one country that they are uh, you know entering they be able to you know open up that entire new market so essentially that is what exports is they are basically uh, uh, exporting indian railway product uh, products uh, to export markets they also manufacture coaches and basically they are able to engineer and design these uh, these products right again yeah. this is in margin business for uh, 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 rights the third i want to talk about is the leasing business of it so leasing is essentially they are giving it to domestic majorly domestic non rail clients for example sale coal india limited lnt port trust here a lot of uh, uh, they have dedicated rail lines okay for uh, for whatever requirements for example coal coal and thermal power plants require uh, rails to carry carry the raw material uh the ports require to carry the freight uh, in inland etc etc right so these guys are essentially providing wet leases of their uh, rolling stock basically wet leases means that the company not only provides the uh, the the train or the locomotive or the demo set they also operate it and uh, uh, you know uh, service it basically maintain and operate it so basically wet leasing business i think currently they have about 70 or 80 total uh, 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 you know trains leased out under this model again very high uh, very good margin uh, product uh, for rights and this is quite quite a niche area you can't really expect any other company to come up and say we will do this you can say virtually it's like a monopoly for rights there then another thing that the company does is turnkey projects so essentially if you if you heard me so far uh, what they've been doing is consulting and selling of equipment and to some extent manufacturing of some coaches right so some of the clients said that we don't want only this we want you to con- take care of the entire project okay so it essentially it is majorly a construction activity and major client is railways so kind of work is like rail line electrification signaling uh, you know setting up signaling doubling of railway track these kind of works they are doing they are also doing rail over bridges etc etc so uh, and internationally also they are ma- ma- doing some construction projects like for example in mauritius they are they are building a port for for their government something some stuff like that but turnkey unfortunately is a low margin product so turnkey is that p- proportion of rights which is very similar to what a normal infrastructure company would do you know like epc projects and uh, and the like so very low margin uh product, projects but one thing that works on the favor for rights is that they don't put up their own capital for such projects so essentially the the client whether it is the railway or whether it's an export client they pay up in advance and then rights begins work so it doesn't have to kind of block its capital like how a traditional infra company would would do so so essentially they don't have too much debt issues uh, which you would see endemic to infrastructure companies right finally others is essentially they have got three subsidiaries again i the reason i'm going into the depth is because these are interesting businesses to be in 
so uh, one is rail uh, railway uh, energy management uh, corporation limited so these essentially are uh, is a company to harness renewable energy through wind and solar across uh, you know so railway tracks so just right now they've got a huge um, uh, uh, 3 gigawatt solar uh, power plant project that remcl is going to be undertaking out of which 2.6 gigawatt is going to be uh, you know uh, under a developer mode where where they'll be they'll be inviting developers to bid for it and then they will get them to do it and 400 megawatt will be done by remcl and indian railways put together so they will be actually putting in the the capex and uh, and everything for that then there is srb w ipl basically this is a box wagon manufacturing company and then a newly uh, rights has gotten 24% uh, stake for about 50 crores in this irs dc is a newly formed company indian railway station development corporation essentially face lifting or completely renovating uh, you know indian railway stations you know that many of our stations require to to get modernized and start looking better so the company again has you know i would say i, I cannot say whether it's an exciting or a bad opportunity but it has had to put in 50 uh, crores to get in equity in this and this uh, this put together is about 1 to 2% of the revenues of the company great so talking about the revenues and the profit after tax and you know what what we can imply from this particular slide is uh, consultancy forms about 45% of the revenues and turnkey forms about 27% of the revenues that's on the left hand side and on the right hand side you can see consultancy forms about 74% of the profits okay and turnkey forms about only 3% of the profits okay so there is a there is a huge skew between the the margins okay consultancy is an extremely high profit margin business for them whereas turnkey is a low profit margin business for them okay yeah. and if we talk about leasing exports they lie somewhere in the middle uh, you know neither of them is significant uh, you know as a proportion of either revenues or profits okay of course exports is significant but then the margin profile is kind of you know in sync with what the revenue profile is correct right abhijit and you know this is a slide that uh, you know there is a lot of information on this slide so essentially this slide shows you a trend of how each of the segments of the company has performed over the last 5 or 6 years right so viewers can you know even pause this slide and have a detailed look but essentially the story is the same that the consultancy business which is you can say the biggest uh, in the previous slide we saw the largest margins come from the consultancy business almost almost you know more than 50% margins in that business and if you can see on the bottom right the turnkey business you know uh, very big blue bars and very small uh, red bars so the yeah only 4 3 4 percent margin business so uh, revenues have grown but at the slight cost of you know uh, profitability because uh, i mean none of these segments is not profitable but overall there is pressure on the uh, operating margins of the company this is what the chart is basically uh, saying yeah and abhinith uh, another thing that needs to be uh, spoken of is that this company went public in 2018 okay very recent uh, very recent listing for rights okay but it's a very old uh, old company one of the things that uh, uh, is really really an amazing thing is that uh, you know the growth has majorly been driven through you know improvement in employee efficiency we saw that majority of the business and revenues used to come from consultancy only recently that you know turnkey has you know propped up and they're they are also going aggressive on turnkey but one thing that is very clear and one thing uh, that the, the management says and i have also you know done a detailed analysis what the management is saying is very in sync with what is happening so there is a lot of predictability in the business okay and uh, you know you can kind of trust what the management is saying at least that's the opinion i drew okay so consultancy is you know bound to grow about you know 8 to 10% is what the kind of you know it's basically a is there now so that is what you can expect regular growth in that business exports and leasing you cannot say they can you know give a surprise on either sides and turnkey they, the management has said that they don't want to over you know have more than 35 30 35% of their overall revenues from turnkey so that is the kind of mix that they want to have okay so if you see on the left side the revenue per employee has gone from 0.41 uh, to 0.82 okay uh crores basically crores yeah yeah in the span of 5 uh, years okay so essentially they have not really added employees okay they have got around 3000 total employees over the last 5 years and they have essentially almost doubled their revenues which is a phenomenal phenomenal performance you know so actually in a way i i have to say this that 
this goes to say that you know that office office you know mufaddilal kind of situation which you see in a psu that things don't really move the minute you want it to happen when there is a pro proper management that's driving it such as this management that the company has you know you can get work done out of people this business is very well run it's run like a professional company the roc and roi numbers that you are seeing they are they are phenomenal and the company does a lot of business that is non government see if it's only serving the government you can say that sarkari sarkari ko serve kar raha hai and that is why you know numbers can be good you know kalpa what are you saying but this company is not just serving the indian railways okay they've got 72% serving the government and 30% uh, coming from private and others okay and uh, <clears throat> if you see even the order book they have got an order book of about 6600 crores and the last year revenue was about 2500 crores so the order order book is also for two and a half years they have got a healthy order book and this is typically been the trend across the time abinid so as they are growing their order book is also growing very healthy healthy situation so far now i would like you to uh, you know spoil the party abinid right so before uh, you know before we talk about some critical aspects of the company i just want to highlight the viewers attention to you know important financial numbers so uh, on the rightmost column you can see the five year cgr growth rate in revenues and profit after tax it's quite in sync okay uh, secondly i want to highlight your attention to the cash flow generating ability of the business and uh, you know it is quite healthy so barring uh, fy20 where they had issues uh, in generating cash flows okay they generally generate more cash flows than the profits that they make okay so cash flow is not a big problem for the company okay uh thirdly i want to draw your attention kalpak to the net fixed asset turnover okay so on the first slide we spoke about whether it's an infra company or it is you know a consultancy company uh looking at the net fixed asset turnover we can you know we can say with a fair amount of certainty that this is definitely not an infra company okay Absolutely. this looks like a you know enfat of a consultancy company where using a very minimal uh, you know net block or fixed assets they are able to generate decent amount of revenues okay and uh, finally i want to draw your attention to the dividend payout ratio so you see that you know uh about 30 40% of the profits every year are you know paid as dividends now here another argument comes is uh, government is a majority you know stakeholder in the company and the government would all, always want uh, uh, good performing psus to give out dividends right uh, that's a, that's a very fair argument but uh, for retail investors you know especially uh, risk covers investors who uh they who seek regular dividends uh, you know this kind of a number of 30 40% dividend payout ratio is excellent okay and uh, when you when you compare the dividend per share with the uh, price per share the number comes to about 5 6% which we have seen in the second slide right so the you know the dividend yield is about 5 to 6% so the numbers are extremely good and uh, you know before we move on to the next slide there are two more points that i want to talk about is uh, just just take a look at the debt of the of the company kalpak so there is virtually no debt on the balance sheet of the company it's about 40 odd crores and you know uh, you can see that it has been continuously declining for the last 4 to 5 years okay mm -hmm. and also uh, i want you to take a look at the cash that the company holds okay so the company uh, as of now it holds about 1200 crores of cash okay and the market cap is close to about 6000 odd crores so we can say that you know uh, it is uh, it is one of those rare cases of of a company in the infrastructure space which holds cash okay so uh, when the entire ent yeah you know i can conclude that this is not an infrastructure company this is this is not a typical infrastructure company it is uh, you know it is some kind of a some kind of a sweet spot between an infrastructure company and a consulting company exactly so moving on uh, kalpak this is uh, you know this is uh, i can say a consensus opinion uh, that that big investors have formed about psus okay and uh, it's it's very uh, you know it's not a good feeling to say this that buying a struggling psu makes sense over buying a well performing psu now what has been happening is uh, you know most of the psus out there okay they are they are not managed well they are mismanaged okay and psu being a psu the government cannot really allow one to fail okay now what do you do in this kind of a situation when one psu is not doing good okay and there is one psu like a rights which is doing extremely well okay 
and then a time comes when the government has to save the shareholders of a you know of of a of a not of of a bad psu let me say okay of a bad psu the only option that the government has is you know make a good psu buy a bad psu okay and then naturally the shareholders of a, of a not well run psu get rewarded and the shareholders of a psu which is well run they they you know they get punished okay now this kind of an arrangement we keep you know we keep looking at in the banking space okay so we have seen some some huge mergers and acquisitions in the banking in the psu banking space in the last 2 to 3 years okay uh, nirmala sitaraman will always be remembered by the you know the shareholders of the good public sector banks as well as the bad public sector banks okay obviously for different reasons okay uh, but you know the the consensus that the investor community carries is PSU means there is there will be some kind of uh, arrangement of a good and a bad getting together. Okay, now this you know this particular point I want to talk about more by showing the chart of price to book ratio of the entire index. Okay, so the public sector enterprises index on NSE, which is Nifty PSE, you can see it here. Okay, so this is the chart since 2014, Kalpak, and I have especially marked it here. that is 17 june 2014 the price to book ratio is 2.25 okay and we can see here that as on today okay so th there are no dates here but i can i can confirm that this date is today's date okay so as on today the index is you know it's struggling to have a price to book ratio of 1 okay now uh, for the viewers who do not know what is price to book ratio i want to take a minute and tell you that price to book ratio in very simple terms is how much multiple you will pay for that company's total net worth okay so if the company is worth 1000 crores you will pay 1000 crores to buy that company okay if the company is worth 1000 crores and you pay 2000 crores to buy that company you are giving it a price to book multiple of 2 okay i don't want to confuse uh, you know any more about this uh in short what you can conclude is the higher the price to book ratio the more is the confidence that investors have in the management okay that they can they can say that the management will be able to preserve the net worth of the company okay now you can see there is a clear clear downtrend about the you know about the price to book ratio and you can conclude that the confidence that the investor community has in 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 you know in in the government as a manager of the business it's clearly on a decline okay and nobody knows where this is going to stop uh, you know uh, it looks like there has been a bottom here you know the you know uh, it won't go below one okay but then you don't you don't really know what's going, what's going to happen uh, ahead in fact if you see the current psc index is at uh, you know price to book of one and yeah. we are all time high nifty you know correct So I mean that really speaks volumes. That even at a very euphoric market, uh, yeah, PSE index is still at uh, one multiple. Yeah. Yes, PSE index is still struggling. And you look some, you know, you look some private sector companies. They enjoy a price to book of book of five, six, seven, twelve. You know. Uh, so there is a very clear, very clear trend here that uh, you know the private sector as a manager is trusted more than the government as a manager. Yeah. Okay. and we have discussed the reasons for this in the earlier slide now what i want to do kalpak is i want to show you the price to book ratio of rights okay so as you can see rights has been you know uh, one of the rare psus which has consistently been above a price to book ratio of 2 okay so currently also it is somewhere about 2.3 is the price to book ratio now what we can conclude by looking at these two slides is uh, rights as an organization enjoys a higher level of confidence than the general pscs or the you know public sector under undertakings okay uh, for obvious reasons that you have already mentioned you know it's a very well run business and it is difficult to find this kind of a business in you know managed by the government or in the psu space okay talking about what will be the government's intention going ahead okay uh, now let me let me put it this way kalpak you know uh, it is it is a common common phenomenon that the government will you know try to save a ailing psu by marrying it with a good psu okay but then an exceptionally well performing public sector undertaking like rights and if the government decides to you know uh, do some kind of a hanky panky with the shareholders of such a company then you just can't trust the government anymore okay 
so we have seen this in the banking space the shareholders of the bank of baroda have been punished time and again it's a very you know uh, relatively very well run psu compared to other uh, you know banking psus uh, uh we can't predict but then the thing is that it looks like the government wouldn't want to do something with the shareholders of this company because it's a it's you know it's like a it's like a crown in the jewel okay so india stands for manpower manpower export so tcs infosys we have seen so many stories okay right. now it is a pride for the country to have a public sector undertaking like rights which has executed projects in about 55 odd countries okay and if the government uh, decides to mess around with the shareholders then there is nothing to speak so the best we can hope is the government will not do anything with the shareholders of rights abhi that uh, the last 5 minutes was a very very uh, uh, very well said uh, discussion i mean you really framed it very well i would like our viewers to know that this is not uh, you know uh, unnecessary bashing of the government that's we are not trying to take a political side here it is just that we are just uh, telling you what the market is uh, how the market is valuing uh, the performance of the government okay uh, at least the equity side of the uh, of the companies that the governments run but really really well said abhinit i i have to agree with everything that you said there so we'll we'll quickly uh, summarize uh, the discussion on rights okay so there is a lot of good in the company right i mean there is not too much bad that i can currently say right that uh, firstly the environment is very good one thing that we have to give kudos to the current government is that they have a good strong track record with infrastructure they've been really uh ambitious and they also delivered uh, from you know the bharat mala project to a lot of progress in lot of metro uh, metro rail developments and also you know they were able to uh, create the one vande bharat coaches so quickly i mean okay fine it didn't really turn out to be excellent but you know you cannot doubt the government with infrastructure and the government has actually uh, given a 111 lakh crore commitment till 2025 okay and uh, you know uh, overall also in the economy government spending is expected to happen because uh, you know private spending is kind of uh, in a lull after the pandemic so this is a very very positive for a company like rights okay because they will bag more projects from the government another thing is very high operational efficiency i believe and very high growth for the company also so it's been a consistent compounder and uh, that's a really positive thing uh one more thing that we covered is that it's a skill based core business okay it's a technical business which requires skill which is rare to get okay and it has a strong parentage which acts as a moat this is for sure you are you are looking at a moat here and the business is also having good geographies they are able to do various projects okay uh and they've got excellent revenues and eps growth so i mean it's like a great story and then the bad the first point is a psu risk factor you don't really know what to say about it you know yeah. because because government as a parentage is can be a good thing also because you are never going to die as a company you are never going to be let you know left to the dogs the government will always you know uh, uh, lift you up but the problem is that you know there is a, you know bad performers are rewarded performers are rewarded and good performers are punished kind of a nature of how the psus are uh, run which is I, i think it should be completely turned the other way around and uh, you know india will really go to great heights because like you correctly said you know i also feel very patriotic that we've got such companies in the country okay and such high quality uh, uh, you know services can can be provided uh, even by a psu right another point that is a slight contention is the new uh, subsidiaries that the company has you know some amount of debt and capital has to be pumped in but it can't really be said it's a bad point it's basically an unproven business so it could be one of those traps where the government is pushing rights ki you also need to do this now it's your duty that you're a big company try doing this okay or maybe it is a profitable venture only time will tell okay and another thing that is slightly you know a uh, uh, bit worrying is that a slow growing pace of consulting business but that really is not really too much of a too, too much of a concern according to me right on the second point kalpak uh, you know the reputation of our psus is so bad uh, with respect to capital allocation that investors would always be always be in a state of suspicion whenever they see a psu acquiring some company or you know making some kind of a capex okay Absolutely. now i'm i i i i'm not saying that it is it's going to be a bad investment but uh, uh, you know since it's a psu this kind of uh, this kind of an acquisition will always be taken with some pinch of salt correct abhinit yeah right so guys uh, here's a company we have excellent fundamentals excellent track record 
uh, you know, business in the high growth area, transportation is a very, very, uh, you know, high growth area in our country. Uh, on the on the negative side, we spoke about uh, how parentage by the government can be a double-edged sword, okay? Uh, you know, you, uh, ideally, like Kalpak said, when the government is the owner, uh, your equity value will never go to zero. But then that's not what you always want as a shareholder, okay? You want your company to, you know, exceed expectations, okay? And as far as the track record of the company is concerned, we can be very hopeful that the company will keep doing well, okay? It's a very professionally managed company. So on the business, we would rate it as five and five. The valuations are good, okay? Owing to the owing to the you know sentiment against PSUs, okay? And on a promoter kalpak, I would want it to be a question mark, okay? I mean, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to rate our government as two and five, okay? But but it's only time that will say that you know what kind of a what kind of a manager or what kind of a promoter the government has been in a company like rights. So guys, uh, what do, what do you think? How would you rate the government as a promoter? So uh, we would like you to fill in that blanks in the comment section below. Please like and share our video if you liked it. We would like it if you subscribe to our channel and uh, hope you enjoyed this cup of chai. Thank you.